Hi everyone, Dutch Reefer here and welcome to the latest Focus Rider video featuring my Red Sea Reefer 525. If you're already subscribing then thank you very much and if you're not yet subscribed please feel free to do so and let's get on with the video. Today um, I'm going to do some kind of a community question edition uh, since there are a couple of questions that I uh, receive quite a lot uh, and of course I try to answer them uh, uh, to the best of my abilities uh, but I thought let's feature a video where I will discuss uh, a couple of questions uh, into somewhat more detail so instead of just text I can also show you so the first question that I get asked quite a lot is how will I attach or how do I attach my GSP Green Star Polyp to the back of the tank um, well, it's actually quite simple, but um, let's uh, let's show you. So, as you can see at this time, uh, it's already attached to the back of the tank. So, it's uh, uh, whenever it grows, it automatically connects to the back, and it will stay there in place. But it can be a bit troublesome to get it there at first, especially since uh, glue doesn't stick very well on plain windows. So, the first thing you need is uh, a decent type of glue. So the glue that I'm using uh, most of the time is called Reef Glue by uh, Seachem, just the way you pronounce it. This is a very good glue. It's a bit thick, so whenever you apply it, it's, um, it's not uh, running away, it's uh, staying in place, and it's very easy to use. And another one that I've uh, recently tried for the first time, which is also pretty good, is the Corafix Gel by Two Little Fishies. Well, the thing that these glues have in common, and you can see it below the title, is that it contains cyanoacrylate adhesive, or it's an adhesive containing cyanoacrylate, and that's very important, uh, since that's the component that's in superglue as well, uh, which makes it uh, very sticky and very uh, it dries pretty fast, uh, so it's an ideal type of glue to use. So whenever, whatever glue you're buying, make sure it's... Uh, it contains cyanoacrylate so that's mainly the key and then what helps is um, if the uh, glass you're attaching it to already has some coralline algae on it as you can see um, I don't clean the, the, the back of the tank to give it a more natural look but also because I'm lazy um, and overall I think it looks pretty okay and so whenever there's already some coralline algae there it's uh, much easier to uh, to attach the coral when you apply the bit of glue. So you take a bit of GSP, you put a bit of glue on the back, you uh, put it on the back of the tank, you move it around a little bit so the, the little film that will uh, um, that will be there whenever you put the glue underwater, you will break it and the glue will attach itself to the coralline algae or if you don't have it yet to the glass and if it's just bare glass, you might have to try one or two times. Uh, eventually it will stick and, uh, well, as you can see, GSP will stick, Montipora will stick, uh, a piece of uh, uh, Gorgonian will stick, even bigger corals uh, like uh, Montipora or Cyphostria will also uh, stick to the back of the tank eventually. So that was, uh, that, was that question. The next question that I get asked quite a lot is uh, do, I, do I use a quarantine tank or any quarantine procedures um, before adding new fish to the tank? And the answer is no. Um, I don't have a quarantine tank. Um, on the one hand it's too much of trouble for me, too much hassle uh, to, uh, to keep a quarantine tank. And actually my procedure is pretty simple whenever I buy a new fish of course, when I'm at my LFS, I make sure that it's uh, healthy, or at least it looks healthy. And whenever I uh, add it, I um, will um, put it in a bucket, take some water out of the tank, and slowly add it over the next 20 minutes so the fish will get accustomed to the water quality a bit, and then I add it into the tank. Um, there is one thing that I think, and I'm convinced, that helps me from, uh, that prevents the fish from getting diseases or parasites, and that's the UVC. So as you might have seen before in my previous videos, 
I am using a UVC unit which is right here um, it's a 36 watts JBL uh, Pro Crystal if I'm correct and uh, I've been using it for years I've just replaced the bulb uh, last week so I usually replace the bulb every year once every year since the capacity about halves each year so I know that by December I'll have about uh, 18 watts of capacity left and then in January or February I will uh, uh, put in a new light and have the full 36 watts available. Other than uh, preventing parasites from uh, growing up, since that's effectively what it's doing, it's also uh, making sure that your water is uh, uh, crystal clear, so pristine water quality is one of the other uh, major advantages of using a UVC unit. So uh, the third question, and that's a really quick one, I get asked almost every video what's this fish called the fish the black fish with the large dorsal fin well it's called a spotted drum the spotted drum uh, is a very uh, nice fish to keep especially when you buy it as a juvenile this one has grown up quite a bit already uh, they can become bullies but so far this one has been uh, behaving uh, very well and um, so spotted drum is the name and the Latin name is Equatus punctatus. I will put this in the video description so you can easily copy and paste it whenever you're looking for this fish. It's not a very common fish, but it's also not a majorly expensive fish. I think you can get it for below $100. It should be, uh, that should be possible. Um, question number four is, um, Dutch reefer, how much water changes do you do? Well, I can be short about that as well. I don't do a lot of water changes. Why? Because I'm using Balling Classic. And Balling Classic is uh, one of the methods which was, um, it originates from a guy called Hans Werner Balling. So, uh, well, the name kind of makes sense since it's his last name. And Hans Werner Balling found out that this method of adding calcium um, well alkalinity stuff NH well, CO3 I think um, and magnesium to your uh, to your uh, water will uh, keep water parameters in check like for example your alkalinity your calcium and your magnesium so you're adding the powders to water I have a separate video about that but what you also do is that you add some uh, um, natrium chloride free salt to the magnesium mix and uh, what it essentially does and correct me if I'm wrong but uh, what it does it, it negates the effect um, that adding uh, all these other salts to your tank which will slowly um, turn your tank into a kitchen salt kind of water tank which will uh, harm your corals over the long run in the long run over longer periods of time it will harm your fish and corals so to prevent your uh, your uh, your salt water tank to turn into a kitchen salt water tank uh, you add the uh, natrium chloride free salt and uh, well together that uh, uh, that's the system it's it's been used a lot by various uh, manufacturers for example Triton, ATI, um, Aquaforest they all have balling like solutions where you add three different components to your tank and whenever you're buying one of those solutions it's uh, almost every time it's based on uh, on balling the balling method so balling classic is what I'm using um, it's a very effective way, It's uh, um, depending on what kind of salt you buy, it's also a pretty cost effective way and you don't have to uh, do a lot of water changes. The downside of not doing a lot of water changes, uh, and that's my last comment, is that um, the nutrients in your tank will probably uh, be a little higher than usual since you're not exporting them through water changes, so you have to take additional measures to remove and reduce nitrates and phosphates. So that's, uh, that's the video for today. I uh, hope you uh, enjoyed it. I hope uh, I uh, could be of service and uh, I'll see you in the next one. So bye bye for now.